this may seem very kind of like, oh, I learned that in fourth grade, but I feel like it's important to kind of start with fractions because we are no longer on decimals. So this right here is a fraction. This is not new information for you. The top part is a numerator and the bottom part is a denominator. So in your notebook, at the top, I want you to write this. I know my paper doesn't have lines on it, but we're gonna take a few notes up here and then I have a sheet that I'm gonna have you glue in for the bottom half. So the numerator is how many parts you have of the whole. So find a place in your math notebook to write this. And then the denominator, so the bottom number is how many parts you need to make the whole. And I think the easiest way in terms of fractions, and you'll hear me use this all the time, because one, oh, I love food, and two, when I think of fractions, I just, I automatically think of pizza, okay? It's easy, and it's something that everybody can relate to. So, I'm gonna draw a pizza. There's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, okay? It's just the easiest thing for me to relate fractions to. And let's say this is one eighth of the whole pizza. I like pepperoni. That may be your favorite, maybe not. Maybe you're a sausage kind of person. Okay, and that, the whole thing is to represent what each piece of the whole is worth. So let's say I order a medium pizza from Papa John's. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, yeah, eight. One person eats one slice. That's one out of eight. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so sometimes we have difficulty taking this concept of pizza and relating it to division. And that's all that fractions really are. So for this video, I'm gonna kind of focus on fractions as division. So what, when you read like a word problem, it's being able to understand what the question is asking and being able to re relate that into division. So go ahead and get this paper out. And this is an example of fractions being as division because that division line or that line that is in between the numerator and the denominator is essentially kind of asking you to divide. And we're gonna talk a lot about fractions and decimals and fractions as division and it all kind of goes together. So go ahead and glue this page into your notebook. I have not glued mine to my notebook yet. I will do that here soon. But let's read this problem. Cameron and Autumn are sharing three cookies evenly. How much will each girl receive? Now, normally, if you're talking like Girl Scout cookies, you'd probably have four cookies and each girl gets two. But for the sake of fractions as division, unfortunately, Cameron and Autumn are sharing three cookies they're probably Thin Mints, if I had to guess. So three cookies are being shared between one, two girls, okay? 
So three cookies are being shared among two girls. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to um, demonstrate that with math. So three out of two. Then we have one, two, three cookies being divided by two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So let's say Cameron gets a half of this cookie. She also gets a half of this cookie and she also gets a half of this cookie. Okay, so that means that Autumn gets one, two, three halves, which is essentially what this fraction means. But let's talk about that in terms of math. Okay, so this is where the fractions to division really relates to um, fifth grade math. So each girl gets three out of two. Nobody walks around and says, oh, I got three out of two parts of a cookie, okay? So what does that mean? So that's where our division skills really come into play. So there are two girls splitting three cookies. Now remember the dividend is the part of, that is getting divided, which in this case are the cookies. So this is how many girls and this is the cookies. Two goes into three one time. One times two is two. Subtract. And my remainder is one. And that is how many are left. Okay, so the answer to your question Cameron and Autumn are sharing three cookies. How much will each girl receive? They each get one whole cookie and one, how many are left, out of two. So each girl gets one out of two cookies, one and a half. Okay, now, that is the first example, so I don't expect you to know really what I'm talking about just yet. So, the next paper that we're gonna glue into our notebook looks like this, okay? So we go from cookies and now we're just gonna go to straight fractions to division, okay? So fractions can be interpreted as the division of a numerator by a denominator. So anytime the bigger number's on top, that's what we call an improper fraction. And that's kind of where we're headed. If that's something that you pick up on easily, maybe math is your thing, then this will seem quite simple to you. So essentially, fractions are division, division are fractions, fractions are related to decimals, and that's, that's where we're going. So anytime the numerator is bigger than the denominator, you need to change it into a mixed number. And the way you do that is simply to divide similarly to how we did the cookie problem. Okay, so I'm just going to walk through this one, then we're going to do this one together. The numerator is in the house, in the box. The denominator is outside. Three will go into five one time. One times three is three. Subtract. There's nothing to bring down. This is my remainder. The answer or the quotient is your whole number. The remainder is your numerator. And the divisor is your denominator. So what seemed as a quite simple fraction, an improper fraction, and I'm going to write that up here because that's what we're um, starting on. It's an improper fraction. You put the numerator inside, denominator outside, and divide like normal. And it will seem like very simple division. 
okay? Because you could probably just do it in your head. But what you need to know is this turns into this. And this is called a mixed number. Okay, so now let's do this one. This is the numerator, denominator, the numerator, or the, sorry, the denominator goes on the outside. The numerator, the bigger number, goes on the inside. Three will go into seven two times. Two times three is six. Subtract. I have nothing to bring down, which means this is my remainder. This is my answer. Okay. Now, let's take this and turn it into a fraction, just like up here. Okay. So, over here, one was my answer. One becomes the whole number. Two is my answer or quotient. Two becomes my whole number. Okay. Now, the remainder, the remainder is the numerator. The divisor, the divisor is my denominator. So the answer, the mixed number, I'll write that again, is two and one third. Okay, should seem easy. If it seems easy, then don't, don't be concerned, okay? The very start of fractions. Okay, the next page that I want you to do are these four, okay? So, go ahead, pause the video, try them on your own. I'm going to record me working through them but the benefit of watching this on a video is that you can pause it whenever you want and then hit play to check and see if your answers are correct. Okay, so go ahead and pause. Okay, if you are playing the video, that means that you've worked these out and you're ready to check your answers. So, the six goes on the inside of the house, the five goes on the outside. Five goes into six one time, one times five is five, subtract. The answer is the whole number. The remainder is the numerator. The divisor is the denominator. So six fifths in mixed number terms is one and one fifth. For this one, eight goes inside, three goes outside, Three will go in eight two times. Two times three is six. Subtract. My answer is two and two thirds. So this is a whole number, numerator, denominator. Okay, this one. Five goes on the inside, two on the outside. Two will go in to five two times. Two times two is four. Subtract. The quotient is my whole number, the remainder is my numerator, the outside is my denominator. So this one's two and one half. The last one, seven goes on the inside, two on the outside, two will one to seven three times, three times two is six, subtract, three is my whole number, one, the remainder is my numerator, two is the denominator. So you should have got one and one fifth, two and two thirds, two and one half, three and one half. If you feel good about this, then I want you to start working on word problems relating fractions to division. There are one, two, three, four, five, six problems. They are just reading the problem to understand what's being divided and then put it into fraction terms. So, in math class, Brian solved six word problems in five minutes. About how many problems can Brian solve per minute? So think about how you would solve that. And then once you're done with this, you should have a good idea if you want to really understand relating fractions to division.
If you need more practice, there are problems in your fractions booklet. They're the first few pages. So fractions as division, you can go ahead and just divide these. You do not know how to do this part yet, so just for focus on these four problems. And let me know if you have questions. 